8 of Schick Pick 6. I'm Melanie Schickler and we have a lot to discuss after two weeks of being off. We have a Memorial Day special episode. It's all going down right here. We have basketball, baseball, soccer, hockey, and even tennis on today's show. For pick number six, we go into a crazy baseball story. On Wednesday, Mets called up 38-year-old Rahai Davis from the affiliate team who was supposed to play the affiliate team for the Phillies in the Lehigh Valley. Everything sounds normal, nothing out of the ordinary, a major league team calling up a minor league player, everything's normal. Until mentioning that he took a $283 Uber just to get to City Field that night. That's over 100 miles, and he even gave the Uber driver a $50 tip. Not to mention, he didn't even arrive on time. He arrived in the third inning, and he was still eligible to play. He then slugged a three-run homer in the bottom of the eighth to cap off a great night. The Mets won 6-1. to one. Take a look. And he lights one deep left field, and it toward the wall. That ball is out of here! Rajay Davis with a three-run homer in his first at bat as a Met. Six to one, New York. Well, good for you, Rahad Davis. Unfortunately, he was sent back down to the minors. But hey, maybe some more players should start Ubering to work. Before we get into game one of the Stanley Cup final, we have to get to pick number five, which is the unusual playoff curse and the Blues' amazing comeback all season long. Sweep and then get swept. The weird trend going on in this year's playoffs. The New York Islanders swept the Pittsburgh Penguins in the first round, and then the Islanders were swept by the Carolina Hurricanes, who were then swept by the Bruins. Thankfully, that curse is gone because Boston won game one tonight, and nobody would want to see a 4-0 sweep in the Stanley Cup final. That's not fun to watch. For the Blues, they were in last place in the middle of January out of 16 teams in the Western Conference. It's unbelievable that they made a comeback and they clinched the third seed for the playoffs. They didn't even hit a wild card. They went all the way up with even an interim coach that was set back in November. That's incredible. They had only one trade deadline acquisition in picking up Michael Delzato compared to the Bruins who made big moves in acquiring forwards Marcus Johansson from the Devils and Boston native Charlie Coyle from the Minnesota Wild. The Blues are now in their first Stanley Cup final since 1970. That's almost 50 years ago. Guess who they played back then? The Boston Bruins. They were swept by Boston back then, and honestly, I really hope that doesn't happen. Yes, I want Boston to win, obviously, but it's not fun to watch a sweep in the Stanley Cup final. On to pick number four, the French Open kicked off two days ago, and no surprises on the men's side. Novak Djokovic won his first round, Roger Federer won his first match in the French Open actually since 2015, and clay superstar Rafael Nadal won his first match. All three of those men are on to the second round. As for the women, we have big headlines. The number five seed Angelique Kerber lost in straight sets 4-6, 2-4 to an 18-year-old beginner, Russian Anastasia Padapova. Venus Williams is also out in the first round for the second year in a row, losing in straight sets 3-6, 3-6 in just an hour and 13 minutes. For some good news, American favorite Serena Williams won her first match after a slow start, losing the first set 2-6, but then dominating her opponent and going on to win with a final score of 2-6, 6-1, 6-0. For pick number three, we have soccer for the first time ever on our show. After failing to qualify for the Premier League, Aston Villa is back in with the big boys. They beat Derby County this afternoon 2-1, and they have reclaimed a spot with the elite teams. Not to mention, this is the richest sports championship by a wide margin, with the winners receiving $215 million. Anwar Al Ghazi opened the scoring a minute before the end of the first half after diverting in a cross. Then early in the second half, John McGinn capitalized on hesitation by goalie Kel Roos. This turned out to be the winning goal as Derby's Martin Waghorn scored late in the game in the 81st minute to cut the lead in half, but Derby couldn't complete the comeback. That was the easy part, believe it or not. They still have a lot of hard work to do in the Premier League. On to pick number two, and that's a little preview in the NBA Finals. Kawhi and those Toronto Raptors are on to the Finals for the first time. That's an offseason acquisition that really paid off. I mean, they went down two games to nothing against Milwaukee and had to go home against their crowd with no wind, no motivation, no nothing. They then won four games straight, including an incredible incredible Game 5 win in Milwaukee after the series was tied. And then in Game 6, we all thought Milwaukee was sending it back home for a Game 7 until this insane dunk by Kawhi Leonard with 6 minutes to go in the third quarter. 
That then sparked a 26-3 run by the Raptors, which eliminated their 15-point deficit from the third quarter. Leonard had a team leading 27 points and 17 rebounds to help send his team to their first ever finals appearance. It's also the first time the NBA Finals have featured a team outside of the U.S. as Toronto entered the league in 1995 and now it's their first appearance. I don't have an answer for how they're going to stop Steph, Clay, Draymond, and the rest of the Warriors who are going for a 3 peat I've said it before and I will say it numerous more times. I do not want to see the same thing happen for the third year in a row. It's so boring. Don't get me wrong, the players on the Warriors are phenomenal. They deserve all the credit they can get. I'm not hating on them. But I just want to see something different. I'm done with the same thing happening every single year. I need something else to happen. I'm done talking about the Warriors this, the Warriors that. They always win. It's only good for the people in the Bay Area. Everyone wants to see something different. People are obviously fans of those great players in the Warriors, but it's time for something else to happen. On to a brighter note, and that's Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Final being pick number 1. Thankfully, the Bruins won. Everything is great, even though they had, a, honestly, a horrible start. They were off for almost 10 days coming off of the Eastern Conference Finals, and the Blues had much less time to rest, which actually worked in their favor because they had fresh legs as they went up 2-0 off of Vladimir Tarasenko and Braden Shen's goals. The Bruins had a funky first goal. But who cares? A goal is a goal. It bounced off of Clifton, and Blues goalie Jordan Binghamton did not get his stick on it. Then Charlie McAvoy rifled one from the slot, hitting off a Petrangelo stick and going past Binnington, who was not happy with himself for that. Then in the third period, another Bruins fourth liner, Sean Corrali, netted the game-winning goal, sending the crowd into a complete frenzy. The Blues did do their job in keeping Pasternak, Marchand, and Bergeron off of the scoreboard, except Marchand's empty net goal, but you know, they were already winning. But you know what? The Bruins have depth in their lineup, and if you're not going to put the same pressure on the fourth liners that you're going to put on those big guys, that's what's going to happen, and you're going to lose the games because those fourth line guys and third line guys, they're going to step up and they're going to win the game for their team, just like they did tonight. Let's see what happens in Game 2. We'll have coverage of that and much more on next week's episode of Schick Pick 6. NBA Finals Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.